Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, we're going to do a tour. I'll talk about the warm weather crops that I'm getting in, different tips and stuff like that. First, I want to show you what I'm doing here with interplanting, and that'll be something I'll be talking a lot this year. It's just really a way to maximize space. So beautiful heads of lettuce. I mean, look how big that is. These are all going to be coming out over this week. And around them, like, so I'll come in after the video and I'll remove the leaves so that the peppers are showing. So I'm putting peppers in between the lettuce and you can see that I'm harvesting it out. <laughs> There's one buried in here, I'm sure. Um, there it is. So I have to kind of move the lettuce leaves out of the picture so that the peppers get sun. However, the point is that I'm dropping in peppers now the lettuce is going to finish up, putting in the peppers where I want them, getting them established now. There's no need to wait for all your lettuce to come out, or you don't always have to wait for your cool weather crops to come out. You can start interplanting now, and that's just going to give the peppers a lot of time to build up a nice root system. It's been a little bit cold. I'm rolling the dice a little bit with the frost, but they're going to have great root systems. I think they're going to be okay. And as soon as the warmth comes next week, 80 degree days, the root systems are going to help propel the growth of these pepper plants. So I'm getting everything into where I want it to be, not worrying that I have to get rid of all the cool crops or the crops that are in there now before I plant up the summer stuff. Blueberries are doing really well. You have basically you can see that these are just starting to flower or finish up. No, they're just actually starting to flower. So you have basically three kinds of blueberry plants. You have early, mid-season, and late-season blueberries. And you always want to plant two different varieties, but you want to make sure that if you're just doing, say, two plants or four plants, that you're mixing early variety with early or mid variety, or late variety with late variety or mid variety. You just want the plants, the different plants, to be able to flower and cross pollinate each other, so to speak. So if you just did early and you did late, you're not necessarily going to get that cross pollination from the insects. The pollination just helps for bigger and more plump blueberries. So that's why you want to do two varieties. But in some cases, if we come down here, this is the early variety. It's already flowered and it's setting berries. And, and there's probably, I mean, a thousand blueberries on there. That's just wonderful. Oh, let me get in here before I forget. Been showing you how to grow ginger. We know we want to get that for 10 months of growth. And we started this indoors and it's all coming up now. You can see all the ginger coming up, doing what I wanted it to do. Got the growth indoors for a month in the bag. I had plastic over this, keeping it warm. It's all, you know, broke the surface and now there'll be enough warmth. With that warmth coming, remember I was saying the blueberries don't like to be pounded by heat. I'm sorry, the ginger doesn't like to be pounded by the heat. So the blueberry bushes now will provide some shade, keep it cooler, but the sun gets high enough that there's going to be plenty of light hitting the ginger for it to grow. Here's another variety, early variety, with just thousands of blueberries on there. Towers are looking pretty good. They're going to all get up potted with, um, not up potted, but they're going to get more transplants put in of strawberries ahead around the yard. Putting in some peppers mixed in here this year with strawberry plants. So I'm doing strawberries and peppers in the towers. These are the pepper plants that have been in the sunken cold frame. They're looking pretty good, a little bit yellow. They just got fed again, but they're going to be massive. The root systems, I checked them, are filling up that whole container. So they're going to go out, you know, throughout the garden. And I should really get early sweet peppers. I believe these are banana peppers. Not 100% sure, because these were all grown early, like December or so, for videos. And I just didn't have the heart to throw them out. In here, we have the interplanting again. So you can see where the cages are. Those are where I'm dropping my pepper, or I'm sorry, those are where I drop the peas so that the peas will trellis up there. In between, pepper, 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 really crowded, even have potatoes down there. But all the lettuce is coming out, onions are coming in, the peas, I'll be eating the shoots and the pea pods. But there's no reason why I can't be putting in the pepper plants now so that they get established and start growing. Blackberries, just want to show you about May, they all start to flower. And every flower, just about on a blackberry, hopefully I didn't say blueberry, but on the blackberry canes, 
they're going to be berries. So again, probably have a thousand blackberries. These are looking wonderful. I think I'm just going to let these canes move through my garden and see where they end up. So in this space, that's my Tiny Tim that was growing indoors. It's reestablishing, getting used to everything. I'll have Tiny Tims coming out of there, believe it or not. Interplanting, working the size of the plants. Eggplant, 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 and an eggplant over there. They're going to get tall. They love the heat. They don't like having their soil baked. So they'll get some shade from the blackberry canes. There's the um, tomato vine that I've been burying and moving along. That's getting large. That will provide some shade over here. But what's most important on the outer edge is where I put my pepper plants. There is going to be one large um, eggplant right there. But the smaller growing plants, the peppers are on the outside because the sun's going to come right down here, give them plenty of sun. The eggplants will get plenty of sun and I can maximize the space. So I'm getting in at least one tomato that is going to actually be stretched all the way down here. I just did the video on that. And then one, two, three, four, five, six pepper plants, four eggplant, maximizing this space. If you want to know what bolting is, that is bolting cilantro. I'm going to let that flower. This will, it's almost, well there's a carrot in there. So this is almost ready to get harvest. Something came in and was eating, I don't know if these are leaf miners or just slugs chewing on the underside, but this um, spinach got a little bit messed up. But this was pr pretty successful. I was harvesting lettuce out of there. So transition, cool crops into the warm crops here in Maryland. All the spinach, I was eating a ton of that, that overwintered, that's beginning to bolt. That will get cut back uh, this weekend, chopped up, kind of stewed down, mixed with rice, and I'll finish eating that, pull everything out. So that is spinach. That's what spinach looks like when it bolts. The romaine heads are looking beautiful. They still got another seven days or so, 10 days to firm up. That's gonna be delicious. More spinach over there. The peas here are starting to flower. And everything's really taking off. We got really lucky. We got this cool week of like rain, 40 degree nights, 50 degree days. I didn't particularly like the temperature, but the plants, the cool weather crops loved it. So they're really taking off. Apple tree is looking pretty good. I'll be talking about prevention and the sprays I use. Now is the time for me to spray my tomato, um, my tomato plant, my apple tree because I know that fungus diseases come in, so they're all gonna get sprayed. My fruit trees will get sprayed this week. Again, spraying early, you know, keeping notes to identify when diseases and insects come in is really your best friend because you can start spraying and doing prevention two to four weeks early. Clematis looks beautiful. That's just getting bigger and bigger every year. Cleaned up. Most of this garden is cleaned up. Let's go down here. I wanted to show you one more thing. Most of the garden is cleaned up. It's where I want it to be. I feel pretty good, you know, on my list to, on my to-do list for the garden. Well, we got to clean that up a little bit. This is my last wave of radishes interplanted with the kale, peas in the back. The kale will keep the lettuce a little bit cooler, keep the ground cooler, or keep the radishes a little bit cooler. And you can see you know, that the bulbs are forming nicely. They're nice and sweet. I've taken a couple out of here. When I go to the radishes, you know, as we go on in this video, you'll see that they're flowering, the bulbs are getting woody. So fourth planting or so, I can't remember what number I'm on. Tender bulbs being protected by the leaves of the kale, staying cooler, I'll get radishes for a little bit longer. There's even radishes coming up back there that I just started. That's probably, obviously, the fifth round of radishes. My bug hotel has been cleaned up. This space is, you know, nice for good insects. They kind of live in there, do their thing. Potted up this year with marigolds because they're like the super indestructible plant. I want something that I don't have to maintain a whole lot. Bring in some color. Asparagus, more to harvest. I kind of missed it for a week. I didn't go and check on it and it just grew crazily. So this is its fifth year. I can cut a bunch of these stalks back, still harvest spears. I still have time for new spears to come up, mature to look like that, fern out. You just don't want to keep taking from your asparagus plant, like here in Maryland, from May all the way till June 15th because you're taking all the energy and you're eating it. So somewhere around third week of May, I have to let it 
just kind of send up spears, let them grow, let them mature, and then they will recharge themselves. We'll be getting to the peppers later. The shade cloth, I think, is helping the cabbage and the broccoli in here. Looks really good. Because we're getting sunny days, 80 degrees, I'm gonna go from this 50% shade cloth to a 70%. So I'm just gonna darken it a little bit. But everything is, you know, moving along nicely. Again, staying on the subject of prevention, just saw that white butterfly again a couple days ago. So I am going to dust this with my organic dust. No flowers on here, shouldn't be bringing bees or good insects. I just wanna prevent that green caterpillar from devastating my cabbage and my broccoli here. So I'm going to dust now before there's a lot of holes in there. If you're dusting after you see the impact of holes, you know, chewing worms, etc., you'll take care of the problem. Things will probably work out. However, you get a lot of damage. So you can, you know, be preemptive. I scatter uh, cilantro seeds everywhere in my garden. They tend to seed, uh, go to seed pretty quickly. I just let them form because the flowers attract great insects and then whatever seeds are left, I toss them around. So I have all this cilantro coming up by itself. These are the purple top turnips, believe it or not. Um, and they're doing really well. And well, there you go. You can see that the turnips are forming. I'll be harvesting these probably in another, I don't know, seven to 10 days, but they're doing pretty well. Arugula, really fast to bolt when the warmth comes. It's kind of like, you know, your sign. If you're growing arugula and it's starting to flower and bolt, you know that the temperatures are changing and that it's gonna start to affect the rest of your crops. But the flowers are delicious. Now they're a little peppery and spicy at this point, but if you like that, you can eat the flowers and you can eat the buds that are on there. Collards, more broccoli, growing it in different ways as I always experiment. Beautiful spinach, lettuce, and you can see that I'm, you know, growing more than I'm going to be able to eat. And I'm trying to give it away. I don't know why giving away food sometimes is so hard. Different varieties will do differently in your garden. For instance, this, um, I think it was some sort of um, butter crunch gem or a smaller head butter crunch, tends to bolt a little bit sooner than the rest of the lettuce varieties in here different than the bib lettuce right there. So for me, I might want to just not grow this spring to summer. Maybe that's something I grow late summer into fall where it's going to form a little bit better and not bolt. But I really have the 80 degree temperature coming. So I have to get all these cool weather crops out or protect them in some capacity. And I, if you look over here, I'm taking out a lot of my shade cloth, all that protection for like frost. Frost, I'm saying, is done. Uh, just on a side note, I'm also cleaning up that bed. That's my last large bed. That's my pollinator bed, flower garden. It's for beneficial insects, wildlife, all that. And I'm just hacking that back. That should be done this week, too. So, like I was saying, I'm feeling pretty good with where my garden's at. Horseradish is going crazy. That's really cool. I have more lettuce, more peas. I remember I've been talking about putting onions and garlic all throughout my beds just to see if they help lower the damage from problematic insects. We'll see how it goes. You know, but things are looking pretty good. Kale flowers I'm eating. The peas are all going to be in in the next seven to ten days. I'll be doing a video soon on the vertical towers and all the container stuff you see here. I just wanted to get a lot of growth because I just I just didn't feel like doing a couple videos where I'm showing you how to plant stuff. I have a lot of videos on that. So I want to have the containers, the vertical towers set up. I can refer you to how to plant, but I want to show you what it looks like when it's growing. So the red lettuce looks beautiful. Something going on here. This is going to get yanked out. It just doesn't look healthy. Same kind of problem here, which tells me it's an insect, you know, the leaf miners, which I think it is because of that pattern right there. Not slugs, because there's no real holes. The leaf miners get into the leaves and eat that. You know, I have leaf miners, so I'll get rid of that, get rid of the spinach that's problematic. Lots of onions. This guy's looking a little beat up. When I have a plant that's beat up, what's it get? It's gonna get a big drink of water-soluble fertilizer, kinda get everything back on track. Kale, shard, broccoli, all looks good. Here's a tomato, went in at the same time as that one, and it's doing better. Sometimes 
a plant struggles. Maybe you've messed up putting in fertilizer in the soil, you forgot to water, or maybe it's not your fault at all. I'll give that tomato plant, let's go back to it. I'll give it another chance, hit it with a nice, strong, water-soluble fertilizer. If it kicks into gear, I'll, I'll keep it. If it still looks like it's struggling and it's not responding, I know that more fertilizer is not going to make a difference. I'm just going to pull it out, redo the soil a little bit, put something else in there. Fabric pots are looking good. I sell root pouches, you guys probably know, at my seed shop. These are all different root pouches that we sell. They're a great way to grow. But look just how beautiful it is. All the chive flowers are going to be picked, put into a vinegar. A lot has really changed over the last 20 days. Another cool weather area. I'm hoping for kohlrabi, and this is a good sign that it's starting to bulb just a little bit. Right there. Let me make sure I got it in frame where my finger is. So I've got kohlrabi there. We got it in another place. Pak choy, bok choy didn't work. I'm eating the leaves, I'm eating the buds, but it bolted. Um, it was even protected for a while. You can see the clothespin that was there, shade cloth over it. So I'm not going to grow this anymore in the spring. Gave it a try, knowing that I'd probably just eat the leaves. This will all be grown really in the fall. More peas. Strawberry tower coming back to life. I think this is beautiful. I mean, eating out of it. But sometimes I just like growing it because, you know, it just looks so beautiful. So all this will be coming out, giving it away. I've been eating the kale off of here already, just breaking off leaves, sauteing it, cleaned out, last big pile of weeds, cleaned out where my um, butternut squash will be going. Just not going to be putting the acorn squash here. Every year I overplant it, so I'm going to be putting the butter, butternut right in the middle. Two plants so that it can take over this whole space, travel over my compost pile again, and I'll be getting 30, 40 butternut out of it. That's plenty. There's no need for me to grow more. Beets are finally coming up strong. Sometimes they take a long time, but once they get growing, they'll do their thing. And I'll go in there, thin them down to two plants per hole or something like that. Here is, this is the first wave of radishes. I didn't get to all of them. Now they look nice and big, um, they actually bulbed up more, but they're going to seed. Um, they're starting to form the flower heads right down there. So that radish isn't going to be that great. But I'm going to let them form the flowers, maybe collect some seeds, but I'm going to eat the pods when they're about this size. They're really delicious and they have a nice radish taste to it. Here are some asparagus beans. Look at that perfect planting right at the base of the trellis. I didn't do that, that was just a nature drop. So I don't even have to plant my asparagus beans or Chinese noodle beans or Asian noodle beans that go by different names. But they're gonna grow right up here and they all came back by themselves. This is some wave of radish, I don't even know what. Can't keep track of them all. But the, I, these are white icicles and they're starting to turn and they're getting a little bit eaten by something. Oh, that's just the red clay. <laughs> so they're ready to be pulled out. They're delicious too, but the warmth is coming. These are black Spanish. They're beginning to flower, and I didn't get any formation of the black radish yet. They take longer. They're like 70, 80 days to mature. Grew really well. Not gonna grow them again in the spring. You know, into the summer, it doesn't look like it's gonna work, so I'm gonna take notes. I'll be trying a black radish from August into October and seeing if that makes a difference. And here's just a quick look of the space. This is, let me spin around. More beets looking good, more kohlrabi. Other waves of radishes coming, the smaller ones right in the front. They're all tender, sweet, and delicious. Plenty of French breakfast right in here. And my parsnips are coming up, that's cool. Just beautiful radishes that are all gonna come out. So I did stagger the radishes well, so that I have plenty. I also have asparagus that I don't want growing there, but I'm going to wait till I harvest everything, dig the roots up of the um, Mary Washington, I also almost said Martha Stewart, Mary Washington asparagus, and that is gonna be put into the gaps that are in my asparagus row. So I'm going to just transplant the asparagus that's growing wild in different places. 
This is the cold frame. I don't know if you saw the video that I just moved in here. I built it four years ago. It's a wonderful cold frame, but I also then bought more. Now I have a greenhouse. It wasn't getting any use. So I'm going to use this as a warm frame for May and for June, and I'm going to put my super hots in there. And this will keep the soil warmer, it'll heat it up more, and it's going to make the super hots think that it's really July or in August. And I want them to take off sooner, flower sooner, and begin producing more quickly. We have carrots. They're getting to a great size. And in here, it's got to get weeded out. I'll be taking some of the spinach and I'm going to start putting my cucumber plants in there by seed this year. Got to fix the trellis because the wood's rotted and it's falling over. But again, I can get the cucumber seeds in here now. I'll be finishing up the spinach over the next seven to 10 days. The cucumbers might germinate. They might do fine. Um, well, they actually, they will do fine, even if the spinach is there. But then when I remove the spinach, put down mulch, give them a feeding, they'll take off, and there's no need to feel like you have to wait again to remove all the spinach or anything out of there. And that's going to be part of my strategy, too, is I am going to do a lot of direct seeding of zucchini, of squash, cucumbers, uh, the butternut that I was just talking about. This will be some cucumbers in here. Maybe a squash plant, not sure what I want to put in there yet. This is all going to be definitely for squash, and I'm just going to do two plants, like one right there, one closer to the cage. As they get bigger and they start getting beat up, I'll be putting another plant into the middle because I'll know I'll be having to remove those two. The middle one will take over. It will start giving me what I need. I used to grow eight, 12 zucchini uh, plants, squash plants. I never ate it all, couldn't give it away. So why go through the hassle of growing so much that you don't need and you have to care for? As the shade cloth is here on the side, again, I'll have the light that's going to come down here. The sun is going to be behind me. I'll be putting in my tomato plants. There'll be four tomato plants going into that four foot by four foot space. Deciding what I'm going to put into here. Garlic. That's garlic I bought at Costco. That's been sitting there for seven days. I could probably do something with that. But I put it all into here. You can see all the garlic that's coming up and that's an experiment to see if the garlic helps protect the broccoli plants that are in here. Cabbage, not cabbage, tomatoes will be going into here. You can see I just leave the metal posts in there. So I'll be doing three, six, nine tomato plants in there. I think this is wonderful growth over the last, I don't know, has it been two weeks since the last Garden Ramblings? Things look really good. Let's go over to, oh, uh, you know what, let's just walk. So we'll come down here. I am getting close to having just about everything weeded in some capacity that I need to have weeded. Oh, just FYI, like the weeds are under control here because I just took a weed eater and I just whacked everything back down. I was getting out of control with all the rain. I don't have time to weed all that. So I just cut it back, looks better slows the weed growth down and pretty soon I'll have mulch down here and I'll take every care of everything once I have everything planted. You can only do so much. So my goal was to get the beds prepped, get the plants out, start the seeds. Onions, beautiful. Hardneck garlic from last year, looking good. Potatoes, more garlic. That's garlic back there that I put into the ground maybe the beginning of March or something like that. All the herbs are coming in. That's oregano you see, sage to the left of that. Here's the last, here's a you know closer look of what I'm doing over here. Those are all butterfly bushes. They are sterile varieties, so they don't seed. If you're gonna get butterfly bush, you wanna try and get sterile varieties because they can be problematic. But they were massive and they all died off. Usually I cut them back by half, but nothing came through the through the wood from last year. So I think the temperatures were weird. Anyway, they're all growing up from the roots. They'll be fine. Got to clean up this space. Don't know if I'll do poblanos in here. I might do a cherry tomato hedge and show that off. Potatoes, just they're going crazy. They're looking good. Very excited. These are going to get an organic dust soon because a Colorado potato beetle will be visiting soon. Um, I have time and I want to, again, preempt problems by knowing when they show up in my garden. I have to go check my notes, but I know they come soon. I'm going to be doing a video on refilling this space, like how do you fill up a raised bed. 
they look good this is all going to get cleaned up leftover soil that I don't have a use for right now but I tend to just let things sit around until I need them composting we've been over that I don't think I'll cover that I want to show you the bed over here just mulch this so this is what my main garden will look like eventually the clematis is a wonderful vine I like it it's easy to manage if you don't do anything it gets a little bit out of control I want this to happen I like how it happens shades the compost I think things break down more quickly but the flowers are just beautiful and if it got out of control you can easily get in just rip it out or pot it up or do something but it's a beautiful flower to add and it blooms early like it's uh, May 5th, 6th here, or something like that. Let me open this up. And it's beautiful flowers. Potatoes looking good. So I took this space, cut it down with a weed whacker, put the mulch down. So I'll be planting this up with a lot of the plants that I got in Portugal. They all didn't germinate well. There's a lot of weeds in there that I'll get rid of. So I don't know, you know, if the seed company wasn't the best or something happened, but... You know, a lot of the seeds didn't germinate. However, my tomatoes, my cucumbers, um, peppers, they're all germinating from Portugal and they're going to be filling in this space. Added in onions. Onions are going to do well over there. And onions are a crop that my wife and I love. So I planted more onions this year. And then somewhere in the back, I just put in some beans from Portugal too. I'm going to be direct sowing beans. There's no need to really start them in containers if you don't have a reason. What would that reason be? So if you have limited time and let's say for instance in this garden I put some beans and I put some cucumbers over there and then I go over there and I do you know a squash plant and then some other um, zucchini squashes over there. If I put in all the seeds in different places then I have to come out and tend them all which means it's not so bad if it's kind of cool and it's rainy and it's you know some sunny days but if you get high temperature days with no rain when you put your seeds in and they germinate and the sun is baking the ground, you got to make sure you're coming out here and probably watering every day because that top inch of the soil is going to dry out and it will impact how viable your newly germinated seeds are because the sun will dry the top inch, the roots of the new seedlings um, aren't really that deep and it becomes problematic in that they dry out. So even if you have the space, sometimes you want to seed start cukes, zook, squash, zucchini in a small tray, you know, because you can keep it on the side of your house or in your greenhouse. You can tend to it all. And then when they get bigger, you put them in the ground and they can do a little bit better. Like once you water them in well, you don't really worry if it's hot the next day. You know, you can water every couple of days. So this is where my garden is now. What I do recommend is experiment with direct seeding of the cukes, the zooks, the squash, the beans. You can forgo that step if you don't want to do it. If you are, try and plant them in one place so that you can easily tend to them and keep the watering up. And also begin mixing in your warm weather crops with your cool weather crops. You don't have to wait for everything to finish up or clear it out or anything like that. And even though there's a lot of growth here, if you prepared your beds fairly well, you don't have to, you know, put in more compost or more fertilizer. Maybe, you know, you put more in at the planting hole for your tomato transplant. I'll be doing videos on that. But otherwise, you know, they're not going to need much more fertilizer. Water soluble maybe at planting. But mix in those warm crops get things going and you know don't overly stress that everything has to be kind of wiped to a blank slate before you go to the next round and I'm going to be planting lots of different things together like you've I've, are, you've already seen the onions the garlic mixed into to things I'm going to keep doing that with garlic all over the place because even if it doesn't form that nice bulb as I've been saying it's going to give you some some greenery you can eat so you don't have to grow everything to get to perfect size and or be picture perfect you can use a lot of garden crops at different sizes so I have two more places I want to show you let me um, cut the camera and walk over there I have a new book coming out, co-authored with my friend Kiara. It's called Growing an Edible Landscape. It's going to come out in November. And it's really about looking at your property differently so that you can grow food 
in maybe, you know, non-traditional ways. It's not book two of gardening like my first book. It's not the second book kind of in that series. Maybe book three will be. But it's really a way to think about using all the space in your yard to grow flowers and food. So in this space, I just put in a dwarf apple tree. That is a grapevine seedless concord. I will keep it pruned so it fits the size. The sun will be coming in this way and from behind me, so these plants will get plenty of sun. I found my rhubarb does not like to be heated 24 seven during the summer. So the tree and the grapevine will keep that cool, but it's gonna do its thing early spring and it's coming up nicely. I've not been successful with rhubarb because I was putting it in the wrong place. So I had to learn how to place it best. In the beds over here, and then we're going to walk over to my basil. I have daylilies. Daylily flowers are edible. You have to make sure you're growing daylilies. I just want to stress that. Put in a black currant plant in here so for some foliage. But this is going to be edible too. There's daylilies over there too. So this will look beautiful, beautiful with respect to flowers, um, foliage, but it's also going to be edible. Now we're getting into the warm weather, like I said. So basil and all your warm season herbs can go out. I want to talk about basil. <laughs> I'm trying to fill the air until I walk over to the basil. Um, you don't have to give it its own perfect space. You can put herbs just about anywhere. You can tuck them in in different places. In the bed over here that's being kind of stripped out right now, I scattered dill seeds all over the place and I will get plenty of dill growing in there. The caterpillars will like it, the ones that create butterflies. Um, different butterflies like to eat dill, so it's a great crop for the butterfly. But I'll be able to go out there, pick dill, so I don't have to necessarily dedicate a space to it. Basil, remember, is a warm weather crop, but it doesn't like to be baked 24 seven. And I put basil in here last year. I had beans growing up here. Maybe I'll be doing cucumbers. Kept this area shaded, again, behind the camera. It gets the later southern and western sun. Plenty of sun for the basil. And I was able to grow it for like 90 days. I had to pinch flowers off every once in a while, but it kept its leaves, it kept its flavor, and it's because it liked more shade as July started rolling around. And of course, now that it's May, there's nothing growing here, so it's getting that full sun. These were all grown. They're a little bit beat up because it was getting cold, but they're gonna be fine. And again, if you get plants that are beat up because you get a cold spell, um, look, there's some beans naturally starting. So I'll probably leave those there and nature decided what I'll be growing up this cattle panel. It's gonna be beans again. So if your plants are beat up because it's cold a little bit, just hit them with that water soluble fertilizer. So when this basil gets to about this height, it's all gonna fill in here. I'm gonna drop some more basil seeds, like maybe right there and right there. Just in case these don't make it for 90 days, they'll be doing their thing, I'll be harvesting them. And maybe as they start to run out of steam, the new basil's coming up. And then I start harvesting that. And then as this dies off and I remove it, I'll put new seeds down there. So you wanna do succession planting with the basil so that you keep a continuous supply going. There's more beans right there. Those won't make it because I want them over here. But it's pretty cool how nature knows what to do. Bean seeds, sunflower seeds here, tomato seeds, all pop up when the time is right. So again, I have that book coming out. It's in pre-order. It's going to be out in November if you'd like to look into maybe picking that up, which I greatly appreciate. But remember to take the time, you know, scan through your garden, look at all that you've really accomplished, and just appreciate, you know, the beauty of what you're growing you know, the skills that you're learning and that the way you kind of harvest food, share it with family and friends. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. If you have any questions about today's video, leave it in the comments. I will answer you. Hope you have a great weekend and I hope you have a time or you at least have a chance to get out into your garden. Thanks for watching.